So you've never used 3D before, but you want to have fun posing the doll like a pro. Not a problem. Real quick, I've updated the doll an hour ago to give it some options to run smoother on slower computers. I've also included a text file that explains the timeline, so grab the new version if you haven't already. Now, when you open the file, your screen should look like this. These two screens are for people who understand Blender, but most of you probably should just squish it away. At the bottom, you'll see something called the timeline, which is 45 frames of poses. Each frame is a different pose, and the text document will tell you what each pose is meant to be. Some of them were designed with weapons in mind, but the first 12 were not. Just left click on any frame in the timeline to change the pose. You can control the camera by middle clicking to rotate, scroll up and down to zoom in and out, and hold shift plus middle click to pan the camera. At the top right you will see a bunch of layers. This functions exactly the same way it does in something like Photoshop. You can open the layers to see what's inside them, but the two important ones are called body and head. If we open body you'll see three things. Click on the eyeball to make them visible or invisible. She defaults to wearing heels, but if you prefer bare feet, turn the shoes off and turn the feet on like this. The second group contains everything above the body, as usual you can turn things off and on with the eyes, and underneath that you'll see weapons, which if you wanted to hold a prop then I've included some for you to mess with. Now that's cool, but what if you want to make your own pose? Well to do that, go up and click this button to make the skeleton visible. Now 3D people call the skeleton a rig. Click the rig, and at the top left go to pose mode, and from here you can left click any of the controllers and press G to move them, or press R to rotate. And when you're done making your adjustments, just left click and accept the new bone position and repeat the process until you're happy with your pose. Now I like to color coordinate everything, so red means right, green means left, and yellow is center. These circles control the direction of the elbow, and these control the direction of the knees. Position of the feet is controlled with these, and you can rotate these to make her foot pivot around your toes. This controls her body position, this controls the rotation of her hips, this controls the direction her chest is facing, her neck is controlled with this, and this controls where she's looking and you can rotate it to make her head tilt left and right. And you can rotate the entire thing if you rotate or move the base platform. Now if you want to control the fingers, change your layer from 2 to 3, and you'll see the controllers for the finger and the hair appear. You can manually set the rotation if you want, or you can drag select, go to the right, and click the position you want the fingers to be. I've included some defaults for you like fist open, clenched fist, or neutral. Once you've clicked the pose you want, hit the magnifying glass and the fingers will automatically jump to that position. When you're done, you can go back to the second layer and return to the rest of the rig. Now if it lags, what you can do is uncheck the box next to the eye for the head, and that tells Blender to pretend the head no longer exists, which will help it run faster. And if it's still lagging after you turn off the head, go over here, turn into wireframe mode, go back to object mode, click on the body, and on the right under modifiers, turn subdivision and solidify off. When you go back to pose mode, it should run way smoother. And when you're done posing, go back to object mode, turn subdivision and solidify back on, turn the head back on, click this to hide the rig, and I normally set the view to material, but you can also turn the render view on to get the lighting and shadows if you want. Now if you're on the commercial version, you can change the clothes she's wearing by going to object mode, clicking on the body, and under the materials, click the top one and pick the outfit that you want. If you want to change the color of the outfits, you can go to File, and in the Texture folder you'll find the original maps. Find the outfit that you're looking for, and use whatever program you want to make adjustments. If you're on Windows, the easiest way to swap colors is to right-click the map, open in Paint, turn Transparency on, use the eyedrop and right-click the color that you want to change, then Ctrl A to select all, Ctrl X to cut, left-click any color you want, you can go here to edit it if you need, then click the Paint bucket, left-click the image, and Ctrl V to paste. And it will automatically replace the old color with the new one. From here you just save. If you drag the squishy window back out, down here, you just drag the new map into the shader editor and plug the new map right here to replace the old ones. If you want to change the color of her hair, in object mode click her hair, and in the shader editor you will see the material. Press tab, go to the color ramp, and change the color of the nodes on the ramp to whatever you want. Then tab to exit, you're done. So, that's how you use the doll. I hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.